So my name is Layla, and my experience with Canada as a black woman is one of erasure. I think that most of my experience, whether it be micro, macro, whether it be through institutions, whether it be on an inter interpersonal level, has been one of erasure. I think a lot of the time, I, as black people in Canada, we are forced to question whether or not our experiences of racism are valid because we aren't the United States or we aren't the past or you don't see this or you don't feel that. I think that um, I've heard it best uh, described as a very kind and polite way of racism. And I think that's why I've always really appreciated being part of such large activist communities that are very um, pressed about making sure that Canada as a country, as a population, remembers the fact that black folks are here, that black folks are a part of their history, and that black folks built what we have now, right? And, it, I, and so when I am in spaces and when I am able to assert myself, it almost ha forces me to forget or it forces me to reassert my existence. Because when your ex experience is mostly one of erasure, at some point you have to ask yourself, am I really here? And I think that that's what Canada really does in trying to make you melt back into the multicultural idea of us, one big community built of multiple colors and multiple backgrounds. And so I remember when we were at the Pride um, rally a few years back and everyone was so upset that Black Lives Matter was stopping the parade. And I think that, right, that's what happens with erasure. You forget that Marsha P. Johnson, a black trans woman, was the one who started this. And you're able to erase and rewrite that history. And when we stopped and people were so upset, it was like, we built this and people are upset that we're taking up space. But we're taking up space not to ask for much. We're taking up space for the right to exist, the right to be funded in a way that represents the fact that, for example, Block Ramo is one of the biggest stages of Prides and brings in the biggest crowd. And so when I'm there and I'm almost having to question myself again, I'm like, am I supposed to be here? Am I allowed to be here? Are they more valid than I am? I have to remember the fact that my experience has been one of erasure and that is not what my experience was meant to be in a country that is based off of colonization, a country that is based off of the death of multiple people who should have been here. So my experience is one of rebuilding not only myself as a black woman in Canada that has a right to exist, but building communities and spaces that also feel that. I am lucky to be a part of that community, but even today, a lot of people aren't, and a lot of people are still having to be forced to, to question whether or not they have a right to be here and a right to take up space. And so, yeah. I, I'm hoping that in some near future, we can be a people that is able to exist um, free. But for now, we rebuild. So today I will be talking about Carrie Best and the Roseland Theatre. The Roseland Theatre is the infamous theatre where Viola Desmond was forcibly removed from the whites only section. But did you know that five years prior, Carrie Best lived the exact same experience in the exact same spot? In 1941, Carrie Best had learned that a few young black teens had been forcibly removed from the whites only section of the theatre. Being outraged, Carrie Best decided to bring it up to the theatre's manager. Especially what she wanted to talk about was the policy that Blacks were only allowed to be on the balconies and that the main floor was reserved to Whites only. So Carrie Best decided to challenge the policy directly. Her and her son went to the theater and decided to sit right in the Whites only section. She refused to leave, and which led to the manager being called and then the police. Her and her son were roughly hoisted from their seats and both were charged and fined. So in response, she filed a civil lawsuit that noted racial discrimination. 
However, the proprietor's right to exclude anyone based off of race won, and the judge completely ignored the fact of racism. Knowing about the history of people like Harry Best and Viola Desmond allows us to understand that Canadians here, Black Canadians here, have a history, and that especially our legal past and the ways in which the legal system has disadvantaged us and has allowed racial discrimination to continue um, is an important part of the experience of people of African descent in Canada. For more information, click the links in the description.